What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Crystal Palace. Is this your first time visiting Universal Orlando? Well then, you need to watch this video because I will be telling you everything you need to know if this is your first visit to Universal Orlando. Fun tips, tricks, and even the basics. Let's go do this. So you're planning your first trip to Universal Orlando. What's the first thing you need to do? Investigate. Do your research on the types of tickets that you can get. You can get the base ticket, which allows you into one park per day. You can get the park to park ticket, which allows you in Universal and Islands of Adventure. You could get the three park ticket, which allows you to go to all three parks, including Volcano Bay being the third park. You could get the Express Pass, which allows you to skip the line. You could get the Express Unlimited Pass, which allows you to skip the line as many times as you would like throughout the day. As you can see, there's a lot of different ticket type options. Therefore, do your research ahead of time and definitely purchase your tickets in advance because you don't want to come here in the morning early, bright and early, ready to go, and then you have to stand in line. Usually the line is long in the morning for the tickets, so definitely buy them ahead of time. Also, they're going to be cheaper if you buy them in advance. My personal recommendation is if you're coming to Universal, try to stay here at least two days three days to do absolutely everything with the park to park ticket because the park to park ticket allows you to ride the Hogwarts Express and that's an experience that you won't want to miss. The next thing you're going to want to do once you have all your tickets and your hotel sorted out is make a plan. There is so much to see and do in Universal between Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure. Make a plan and prioritize your rides and attractions that you want to do so you're not lost and walking around, running around, trying to figure out what to do, where to go, where to eat. I definitely think you should purchase your tickets in advance. However, if you're on edge about the Express Pass and you're not sure if you could buy if you should buy it or not, you can always buy it when you get to the park. They have booths where that sell the Universal Express and you can upgrade your ticket right here if it seems like a crowded day or you decide, you know what, I'm going to get it. They do have these studio maps if you need a guide, but highly recommend downloading the Universal app because it will show you wait times, show times, maps, and more, especially for mobile ordering food, which we will get into in a little bit. So here's the map. This is a violence of adventure, but just to show you what the map looks like, it has lists of all the food options, all of the rides, all everything you need to know like first aid, restrooms, but this is all on the app too. But you know, sometimes you just want a physical physical copy of stuff. Here's all the services you need to know, guest services, lost and found, first aid, family services, all of that good stuff. So if this is your first visit to Universal, you're going to want to know about the locker situation. I always have on a fanny pack at Universal, at least as much as I possibly can, because this, in my opinion, is the easiest way to do Universal. With a fanny pack, you don't have to worry about a locker pretty much at all. The only rides that will require you to put it in a locker or leave your bag, your fanny pack, with a non-rider is the Hulk, Rip Ride Rocket, and Jurassic World Velocicoaster, only because those go through metal detectors. So every other ride, you can wear your fanny pack on the ride. First, there are some lockers at the front of the park. So we're here in Universal Studios. Here are the lockers that are located in the front of the park. And these are $15 for the day. So, I mean, if you want to spend the $15, sure. <laughs> the family locker is $15 per day. How to rent a locker is you're going to use your park ticket. You scan it and you have to pay here and then a locker will pop open. You get to put your stuff in a locker and then go throughout your day. Also, each ride will have a locker station outside of the ride and they have these little envelope size lockers that you can put like your phone in, like any loose articles, smaller bags, or they have these bigger lockers over by the rides as well, but you have to pay for those. So that's why I just wear a fanny pack and I don't have to worry about it. If you forget a fanny pack or you bring a backpack and you decide, you know what, Crystal Palace was right. They do sell fanny packs in at the store or even like these little backpacks will work too, but these are so convenient, so easy. I actually like that Universal one, it's cute. I recommend getting a lanyard, especially if you have the Express Pass, because you're gonna be pulling out your Express Pass a lot to go on each of the rides. And with the lanyard, it'll already be around your neck and it'll be easy to just show your Express Pass. If you forget anything like Advil, Dramamine, anything you need, if you need a Band-Aid, they have first aid services throughout the park, especially located in the front of each park, and they're very helpful, they're very kind if you need anything in case of an emergency. And it's sponsored by Walgreens. 
if you want to save some money, you know that you could bring your own food into Universal. You can't bring anything microwavable, however. You could bring sandwiches, you could bring chips, you could bring snacks. And this is a great place to have a picnic. As you can see, everyone's just kind of lounging out, hanging around. Have a picnic here at Universal with your own sandwich. You could save a lot of money. And it's important to note that if there's an event going on, like Mardi Gras or some concert, this area might be blocked off, but you can definitely eat your snacks and your food that you bring anywhere around the park. Also, while we're here, I want to mention that Rip Ride Rocket is a ride where you can listen to a song while you ride, which makes it one of my favorite attractions. It's so unique. And they also have a secret menu. So when you're down here in the loading station, you'll see a menu right on the seat and you get to pick your song that you want to ride to. Or if you hold down the Rip Ride Rocket logo on the screen, there's actually a secret menu and you type in any number. I'll put up some of the I'll put up some of the secret songs right on the screen here. But if you type in the number, you'll play a song from their little secret menu. It's fun. Also, if you get off Rip Ride Rocket and you're feeling a little queasy, just take a plop it, plop it down right here and, and relax. If you're interested in buying a chocolate frog, you know, from the Harry Potter movies, they have a deal. You could buy three for $35. In this store, we're in the Christmas store in Universal. They only have the milk chocolate, but new, they have dark chocolate ones. So with this deal, it's kind of cool. You can get like two milk chocolates and one dark chocolate to try out. I actually came in this store to buy an ornament and I don't want to carry it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask to ship it back to my hotel. So that's another perk of staying on site is that it has free delivery right to your resort. If you're staying at a premier resort, it goes right to your room. So tomorrow I'll get this in my room, which is great. And I don't have to carry it around all day. What you can also do is ship it to the front city walk store if you're not staying on property. So in city walk, the big universal store, they'll ship it there and you pick it up on your way out. Also, you can get merchandise shipped to your house. You do have to pay for that. It's so anywhere between $10 to, if it's over $500 of merchandise you're buying, it's 5% of whatever the total is. So it depends on how much the total is, but it's like $10, $20 to ship to your house, which is good. I mean, if you don't have room in your luggage or something like that, you wanna buy something big, you can kind of bypass a lot of lines if you use mobile order. Instead of waiting in line, all you do is mobile order from any restaurant that you want. We're in Louis right now. It's pretty good. And you just go to where it says mobile order pickup and pick up your order instead of having to wait and then wait for your food to be ready and finding a table. It's just quick and easy way to eat and grab lunch. If you purchase a souvenir popcorn bucket, it's $12.29 and then the refill is $2.19. If you purchase a Coke freestyle cup, one for 17, two for 15, and three to six for 13 each. And with this cup, you get free refills throughout the day at these Coke Freestyle locations. So here's one by the Men in Black ride. Just an example where you can refill your souvenir cup. So what you do is you buy it for that original price. And then every day after that, it's $10.99 to reactivate your cup per cup. Universal has a lot of character experiences. Sometimes you just walk around and you'll walk into characters hanging out. You can get pictures with them. Look at Doc Brown here. <laughs> Don't miss the SpongeBob store pants store because you can meet some of your favorite SpongeBob characters like Patrick. This store is located near the ET ride and the old Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone. If you're looking for a lot of character interactions, definitely hang out around the Hollywood area. There are so many characters that you can enjoy. If you've been to Disney, you may know that they use fuel rods and they do have them here in Universal as well. So these are portable chargers and what you do is you purchase this whole kit, right, for about $30. I get mine on Amazon, but you can buy them here if you want to. It comes, it comes with all of this. Then you use it in the park. When it goes dead, you find one of these fuel rod stations and you swap out just the rod. You don't, you keep this. You swap out just the rod here and they'll give you a fully charged new fuel rod right there 
ready to use, swappable, rechargeable. This is really, really great for the parks because you are definitely gonna wanna bring a portable charger. Look at this gorgeous view. Brings me to my next point because Islands of Adventure is a very big park and you pretty much, oh, look at that. Velasco's are so good. And you pretty much have to walk around the whole entire park, right? Cause it's one big circle. Which brings me to my next point, and that is to wear comfortable shoes because you're gonna be doing a lot of walking. I'll just tell you what we did so far. On Thursday, we did 22,000 steps. On Friday, we did 20,000 steps. And today, we're already at 15,000 steps. You're gonna be doing a lot of walking, dress comfortably, wear comfortable shoes, break in your shoes, and even walk a little bit before you trip so you're prepared for what you're about to do. My favorite shoes are these APLs. They're a little expensive, but I think that they're 100% worth it. They're so comfortable, they're slip-ons, and they're amazing. If you're worried about any of the seats, all the rides have test seats located outside of the ride that you can test out, see if you feel comfortable, see if you fit in the seat, all of that good stuff. Universal also has single rider lines, which you might want to take advantage of if you are a single rider or if your party doesn't mind being split up, you can do this to try to save some time. So the Hulk is one of those rides that you do need to put your stuff in a locker, locker because you will get metal detected. So here's a locker situation. This one's not that bad at all. It's right outside of the Hulk. The best locker is the Velocicoaster because it's literally in the line. Like everybody has to go through the lockers and you put your stuff in on one side, it comes out another side. It's a great system over there at the Velocicoaster, but the Hulk's not that bad either. Here are the larger lockers. These are the ones that you have to pay for because if you have a bigger bag and they can't fit in the smaller ones, it's $2 while you ride and $3 for every 30 minutes after to a maximum of $20 per day. And just for size reference, here are the smaller lockers, like the size of my hand. Here we are at Mythos. We are having lunch. Mythos is located in Islands of Adventure and it's really nice to just be able to have a nice sit-down meal in the middle of Islands of Adventure, really. Okay, this bread looks really good and it smells really good. Be sure to ask for it because they don't give it to you unless you ask. Oh, and it's warm, yum. All right, this looks like something. There's pork belly on it, there's potato chips, tomato soup, wow. We also got just a plain hamburger and fries. Can't go wrong. I actually have a full video from Mythos. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it in the description down below. Mythos is a really awesome place to eat. However, it might be difficult at times to get a reservation. So this brings me to my next point. Make sure you make some dining reservations in advance if you want to do some sit-down dining. Especially the popular restaurants in City Walk like Toothsome Chocolate Emporium, Cowfish, and Mythos here in Islands of Adventure. If this is your first visit, make sure you don't skip the Raptor Encounter. It's definitely easy to skip. I I've done it the first few times that I've been to Universal, but it's such an awesome experience. Right now, the baby dinosaur is out and we're gonna go and see him, but I'll also put in footage of Blue, meaning Blue, because that's awesome too. He's, you can't miss him, right next to the River Adventure and near the Velocicoaster in the Jurassic Park area of Islands of Adventure. For those of you wondering, Tango is a carnivore. That means she likes to eat meat. Come on in, how you doing, friend? Hello. Hi. Hi, Tango. Welcome. Nice. You're Oh, thank you. Oh, you're talking about Tango. My bad. Sorry. So, oh, well, thanks. thanks. What's your name, Brent? Crystal. Nice to meet you, Crystal. So this is Tango. She's our six-month-old baby velociraptor. Can you do me a quick favor? Two fingers. Go ahead and rub right here under her chin. Be very gentle. Oh, my goodness. We got the dinosaur whisperer over here. You're like her new godmother. That's great. I love that. I love that role for me. Wonderful, wonderful. We got to get her a name tag, okay? Yes. Are you ready for a picture, my friend? Ready. There we go. Look right over there. Cheese. They have a life insurance policy on you, girl. Trust me on this one. This is the one we're going to eat so we can all go to Cancun, right? Easy. Bravo. No nibbles. No, don't you do it. Don't you do it. She already got attacked by a dinosaur. Look at her shorts. Get out of there, young lady. Save Thank yourself. You. Bye. Most nights, Islands of Adventure at Hogsmeade will have a nighttime light show. However, the times aren't scheduled in the app but it runs about every 20 minutes until park close at sundown. It's happening behind me. You can kind of see through the trees. However, we just missed it, unfortunately, but 
just good to know that it does happen. So make sure you head to Hogsmeade at night to check it out. So with that Hogsmeade note leads me to my next point and we gotta go to the other park for that. So let's hop over to Universal for Diagon Alley. Another tip is to make sure you check the height requirements before you come if you're traveling with kids just to know what they can do, what they can't do, what you want to avoid maybe. It's just good to always be prepared. Here we are in Diagon Alley and my tip is to visit Diagon Alley about an hour before the park closes, especially literally minutes before the park closes. You can be in here, get great pictures with Diagon Alley, less empty at night and it's awesome. So definitely come in here at night. There's no like show or anything on Gringotts Bank. However, it is just a good time to visit because it's a lot less crowded. All right, as we make our way out, I wanted to mention that Universal Studios has a nighttime spectacular as well. So since the recording of this video, the cinematic celebration at Universal has actually permanently closed. However, be on the lookout because I have a feeling a new nighttime show will replace it. And you're probably going to want to see it because the cinematic celebration was so awesome. So I know there's only better things to come. If it's your first time at Universal Orlando, I highly recommend that you stay on property. Staying on property gives you so many perks. Not only are the hotels amazing, but it gives you perks like early park admission. The Premier Resorts gives you free express pass included in your stay. You get free merchandise delivery from the park and you get resort wide charging privileges. And of course, I can't forget about the free transportation. I do have a full video all about universal transportation if you want to check that out on the Crystal Palace YouTube channel. If you're looking for discount tickets, you can also purchase your Express Pass and regular park tickets through theparkprodigy.com. They are a trusted Disney and Universal travel company that sells discounted tickets. I use them all the time because who doesn't like discounted tickets? And you can use the code the Crystal Palace 10 to get $10 off. So make sure you use that at checkout. Also check the description for all the links to theparkprodigy.com. All right, everyone, that does it. I hope these tips helped you plan your trip. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I can try to help you answer them as best as I can. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the Crystal Palace right down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.